In the realm of climbing and mountaineering legends, few names carry the same weight and reverence as Chris Bonington. Sir Christian Bonington has been a true pioneer, a visionary, and a man who redefines the limits of human achievement. Chris's life has been a relentless pursuit of summits and a profound source of inspiration for generations of climbers around the globe. Born on August 6, 1934 in Hampstead, London, Chris Bonington's early life may not have hinted at the heights he would eventually scale. His father had left the family when Chris was just nine months old. However, his innate passion for exploration and the great outdoors became evident at a young age. As a climber, he found solace in the hills of Snowdonia where he embarked on his first climbing endeavors. Little did he know that these modest beginnings would lay the foundation for a lifelong journey of unparalleled adventure. Chris began his national service in the Royal Air Force in 1952, and as he failed to fly solo as a pilot, he transferred to the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Here he was able to spend much of his time in the British Isles, particularly in the Avon Gorge, where he put up new routes. After spending a few years in North Germany, he spent two years as a mountaineering instructor for the Army Outward Bound School, propelling his career more into climbing mountains. He began to make some notable first ascents in the Alps and the Himalayas over the following few years, making the first British ascent of the southwest pillar of the Drew in 1958, located in the Alps. Chris then ascended the Annapurna II in the Himalayas for the first time in 1960 at an incredible 7,937 meters in height. The next year, in 1961, Chris left the army and set his eyes on the Nupse, standing at 7,861 meters in elevation. He completed the first ascent by the south face of the peak and it was considered one of the most difficult climbs to be completed in the Himalayas at the time. With a combination of technical expertise, physical endurance, and a profound understanding of teamwork, Chris pushed the boundaries of what was deemed possible in the vertical realm. In 1962, Chris made some decisions that would define the rest of his life. He met his wife Wendy at a Twelfth Night party and married quickly after in May. Chris was also working for Unilever at the time as a management trainee in an attempt to balance his love for mountaineering with a normal career. However, when invited to an expedition to the central tower of Paine in southern Chile that fall, his boss presented him with a choice, continue with his corporate career or pursue climbing. Chris, being the passionate and brave man he is, chose the latter. After leaving his job in July, he then went on to the central tower of Paine. There was actually another expedition that arrived unexpectedly there at the same time, but Chris, along with Don Willens, reached the summit on January 16, 1963, after fighting through intense winds of Patagonia. Over the next few years, Chris and his wife Wendy settled in the Lake District of the UK, taking some time to write his first book, I Chose to Climb, which I have linked in the description. Chris also lectured about his experiences. As Chris typically did, he made a few more first ascents in the Alps and in the UK, notably the Old Man of Hoy in 1966 with Tom Pady and Rusty Bailey, which was broadcast to the public on TV. Tragedy struck in 1966 when Chris and Wendy's first child Conrad, who was born in 1964, lost his life, drowning in a stream outside a family friend's house in Scotland. The heartbreaking loss would be understandably felt by Chris and the family for years to come. The couple had two more children, Daniel and Rupert, born in 67 and 69 respectively. Chris had become a successful photojournalist by 1966, where he was given his first assignment by the Daily Telegraph magazine in covering a first attempt of a direct route of the north face of the Eiger with John Harlan, Dougal Haston, and Leighton Corr. John Harlan sadly died when a rope broke during the expedition, but Dougal Haston and a group of Germans successfully made it to the top. By the late 60s, Chris had set his focus more heavily on the Himalayan mountains to conquer. What still stood untapped was the south wall of the Annapurna mountain at 8,091 meters and the famous Mount Everest at a whopping 8,849 meters. Chris sat down to plan the formidable ascent. This was unknown territory as nobody had climbed a full wall of an 8,000 meter peak in the Himalayas, and Annapurna's was 3,000 meters. Climbing rock and ice at several thousand meters would be a new venture with significant risk involved. It was important that the correct people needed to be selected for the expedition and the logistics had to be just right. 
The years of planning paid off when Dougal Haston and Don Willens got to the summit on May 27, 1970. Tragically, Ian Clough passed away during the expedition due to a falling Serac. As mentioned earlier, Mount Everest was yet to be climbed and was the next step for Chris to plan out. He made one attempt in 1972 but was met with less than ideal weather conditions and could not make it. The opportunity to make the ascent would not come again until the fall of 1975, where Chris led a group of mountaineers up the southwest face of Everest. Doug Scott and Dougal Haston amazingly reached the summit on September 24th of that year in the group overseen by Chris. Rock climbing techniques were needed, with fixed ropes being put on the rock face. Tragically, climber Mick Burke died on the second attempt of the climb during the expedition when storms set in after leaving camp. Chris was appointed Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1976 in the success of the 1975 ascent of Everest. After leading and completing some further notable ascents himself of the Himalayas throughout the 70s and early 80s, Chris finally conquered one of his life goals in summiting Mount Everest himself in April 1985 with the Norwegian Everest expedition led by Arne Ness. Though he was 50, he was the oldest known person to scale the mountain to the summit at the time. After the Everest climb, he was able to enjoy more exploratory climbing that he was passionate about. He packed many more first ascents under his belt, including Malungtse at 7,150 meters, one of the most difficult climbs technically, but also most beautiful. Then, in 1996, Chris was knighted for his service to the sport of mountaineering. Beyond his own personal accomplishments, Chris has also been an advocate for various charities. His first wife, Wendy, passed away in 2014 from motor neuron disease, inspiring him to climb the Old Man of Hoy again to raise funds to help others with their battle against the disease. Additionally, he has been part of efforts to help the mountain people of Nepal with health and education improvements. Today, at the age of 88, Chris Bonington's legacy remains firmly entrenched in the records of mountaineering history. Even in his later years, Chris's passion for the mountains remains undiminished. He continues to explore new horizons and to tackle challenging routes, proving that age is merely a number. His remarkable resilience and zest for life is a source of inspiration for individuals of all ages, reminding them that no dream is too big and no peak too high to conquer. While it's difficult to pack the notable ascents of such a life into one video, Chris Bonington's story shows us that amazing feats can be achieved when one puts their life into their passion. It serves as a constant reminder that the mountains, with their grandeur and challenges, hold transformative power despite life's tragedies. Through his unwavering determination and remarkable achievements, he continues to ignite the spark of adventure within the hearts of all who dare to dream and reach for the skies.